Hi all. I've been looking at this position for more than an hour now. Um, this it's an end game. It was played in Buenos Aires in 1970 between uh, Damjanovic and Bobby Fischer. So Bobby Fischer was playing black here, and I've chosen this example um, because I wanted to explain something about how to make a plan in the end game. Um, as you know, making a plan in chess is one of the most important things. If you don't have a plan, you will lose many, many games. Because if you don't have a plan, you don't know what to do. You don't know what to reach in the long term. So you will simply play move by move, calculating things that maybe are not important in the position. So the first thing to do is to make a plan. Now, before you make a plan, you need to know what's, what's happening in the position. So looking at the position, and um, looking at the, the characteristics and the possibilities where the weaknesses are of the opponent and where your own weaknesses are that's the first part before making a plan let's have a look at this position now now I, I must tell you beforehand that I cannot show you all the different possibilities and variations in this endgame because it, there are a few very beautiful uh, variations, but it's it's just uh, 10 minutes in this video is just too short to show everything. And the main thing is how to make a plan. So let's concentrate on that. Now imagine you are playing black here, and it's your turn to move. Let's look at the position first. If we count the pieces, well, it's very easy to uh, to see that it's equal. Hmm? And if we look at the position further, we see that we have a difference in light pieces. A bishop against a knight. Now, when your opponent has a bishop, the first question that you must ask yourself is, is this a good bishop or a bad bishop? Now, m most of you probably know that we call this a bad bishop because it's a bishop that it's standing on the light colors, the light squares and the pawns of white are fixed on light squares that means that his freedom of movement is very little and all the black pawns are placed on dark squares so that means that uh, the bishop will never be able to attack our pawns the knight is a piece that can jump from light square to dark square so the knight will be able to attack the, the, the white pawns so that's one thing that's better for, for black. Another thing is that in order to win this we need with black to attack the weakest point of, of white and that's in this case the a2 pawn. That's the weakest point. It's not defended by any piece. But how can we attack the a2 pawn? Then we must start fantasizing using our imagination and to think about a fantasy position where we can reach this. Now one idea could be to bring this knight to c3. Then we would attack this a2 pawn. Another idea would be to enter with the king to b2 and capture the a2 pawn and the b3 pawn. Now these are the main goals of our plan. Our plan with black is to enter the position of white and attack this a2 pawn. Now how to achieve this? Maybe you would like to pause the video and try to find a way to attack this a2 pawn. I'll continue the explanation now. The plan that Bobby Fischer found here is to advance his a pawn. By advancing the a-pawn, he wanted to free this c4 square. Because if we advance here and white takes, then the c4 square becomes available for the black king, so the black king can enter. But of course we cannot advance the a-pawn just like that, because it will be taken, and will be a pawn down, and white will have a passed pawn. So the first step is to make a4 possible. He played king to b5. King d3 was played by white, and now he played a4. Now here white can choose to take on a4 or not to take. 
Now, if he doesn't take, in the, in the game he, he took on a4, but if he doesn't take, let's say king e3, then a3 follows. And the idea then is to um, bring our knight to c3 to attack this, uh, this square. And it goes like this. The knight goes to e8 and the road towards c3 looks like this. If king e3, knight d6. Now white can try to prevent knight to g4, uh, sorry to b5, by bishop d7. But in this case, this is a very beautiful, beautiful move. It's a tactic that comes in between that I wanted to show you because what happens here is that if this knight staying, then b3 follows. And after a takes b3, a2, and black promotes. So, okay, this is one of the beautiful variations that there are here hidden in the position, but let's go back to the game now. Because this is what could happen if in this position, after a4, white doesn't take. Then a3 is played and the knight tries to enter towards c3, and there is also this beautiful tactical option. In the game, white took on a4 with check. King takes a4, and now we see that we have achieved something that we want. We can enter now to a3 and attack the a2 pawn. King to c4 was played. King a3, king c5, and now we capture on a2, but white also captures on b4. Now, this position must have been in the calculation of... Um, of Bobby Fischer. He must have seen this position in his mind before he started the advance of the A-pawn. The idea here is that the position is still much better for black than for white. Why? Well, two things. First of all, now we have all the pawns on the same side of the board. That means that the black knight is stronger than the bishop, even more strong than it was before. Because a knight can work in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a small area and the bishop is more a long, long range weapon so if all the pawns are on the same side of the board it's better to have a knight than to have a bishop let's say generally speaking now the game continues with king to b2 and that's the second reason why this position is better for black and that is that the black king has penetrated into the uh, enemy camp so he can now go towards d3 to capture the a4 pawn. King c5 was played, king c3, king d6, king d4. So now this is, let's say, the new plan that black has to attack the weakest point of the white position, and that is the a4 pawn. Now white tries to enter here. Now what is white doing now? If we look at our own position, what is our weakest point? What's the weakest point of black? Well, it is the h6 pawn, because it's not defended, and if it's captured, then white will have a pass pawn here. Now let's have a look at what happened. Knight takes e4, king f7, knight f2. Now black is ready to advance his e pawn. King g6, wanting to capture the h6 pawn, pawn um, e4. Take on h6, e3, g7, king, e2, now h6. And now these are things that have to be calculated. If you get into these positions, you have to calculate what happens. But you can all, only calculate, make calculations, if you know what your plan is, what you want to try to achieve. Now here, queen, h7. Queen e7 check, king goes to g8. Now the last move of the game was knight to e4. What happens here is that if white promotes with check, then black has a beautiful check on f6. The king can go nowhere, so then here white would have to sacrifice his queen, and then it's of course all lost. So well, I hope you found this, um, this video instructive about how to look at a position, how to make a plan before we start calculating variations. Okay, thank you very much and see you next time on YouTube. Bye-bye.